Okay, hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We're super excited to have you here in space with us. Um, just so folks know, um, the, this call is being recorded. Um, so we just ask folks to stay muted. And if they have any questions throughout tonight's meeting, uh, they'll be invited to come off of mute. But um, if they come up like during a presentation or something, feel free to just uh, use the chat box to ask any questions. And um, also, feel free to use the chat box to introduce yourself. Um, and those who are joining us first time, feel free to let us know how you found IJ and sign up to become an official member uh, using the link that will drop in the chat. This will help you to receive monthly updates from us, um, official announcements, quarterly newsletters, all of that. Um, and for folks just joining too, feel free to drop your name in the chat, um, any organization you may be affiliated with that you are joining with tonight. And also, if you feel like answering, um, you can go ahead and let us know if you'll be voting early or on election day as well in the chat. Um, and for those, forgot to introduce myself, for those who don't know me, my name is Brianna. I'm the Membership Engagement Outreach Coordinator here at IJ. Um, and I'll pass it to my colleagues to introduce themselves before we get started tonight. Thanks, Brianna. Hi, everybody. Um, you'll have to forgive me this evening. I am getting over a cold, so I'm still kind of really congested a little bit. So bear with me. Um, I'm Adriana Griffith. I'm the statewide advocacy manager here at IJ. It's a pleasure to be in space with y'all. I see lots of familiar faces, a couple of new faces. Um, and name, so it's great to have y'all y'all in space with us, and I'll pass it over to Ephraim. Hey everyone, my name is Ephraim Ortiz, pronouns he, him. I'm the programs associate with Initiate Justice. Uh, just grateful again to be in space with you all, and looking forward to this uh, workshop number two. I'll pass it over to Katrina. Good evening, everybody. My name is Katrina Risa, the Policy and Advocacy Director here. Yeah. Hey, here gonna... Initiate Justice. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. Please uh, put yourselves on mute. Um, and please forgive me. Um, I caught Adriana's cold. Um, so we are dealing with a little bit of uh, sickness here, but we're not going to let it stop us um, from talking about the dangers of Prop 36 and getting you all trained up. Awesome. Thank you so much, team. Um, and thank you all for being here tonight for an exciting part two of the training. Um, and just to let you all know kind of what we have in store for this evening, so doing a quick little agenda review. Um, we're really just going to take some time to provide a breakdown of a workshop or community meeting structure and kind of how you guys can, can engage in those spaces and really provide you with the tools to host them yourselves in your community. Um, also, we're going to take some time to practice making um, a quick pitch and answering hard questions around Prop 36. And then lastly, we're going to provide you with some resources that will really help you craft your workshops and community meetings the way that feel comfortable for you um, and your community. Um, so just to get us started, we have a lot in store. I'm going to pass it to Adriana for a quick acknowledgement. Thank you, Brianna. Uh, <coughs> oh, again, excuse me, y'all. Um, so Really quickly, before we hop into this training, um, I wanted to come on and just quickly acknowledge and take some quick accountability. Um, so last month, for those of you that joined our September monthly community meeting that was on the first Wednesday of September last month. <clears throat> During that meeting, I may have said some statements, or I said some statements that were not necessarily aligned with initiate justice values when it comes to Prop 36. And um, uh, speaking which I made some statements that may be taken as sort of like what the, uh, not the opponents, but like the yes on Prop 36 folks were saying. Um, and so I left out a lot of context in what I said. Um, and so we really just wanted to, I really just wanted to take the time to just acknowledge that mistake um, from last month and apologize to the community if it was received in any negative way. It was not intended to do so. Um, but as I said, really wanted to just take that time to make that quick acknowledgement and apologize to y'all as the community. Um, definitely when it comes to Prop 36, this is a really dangerous, <coughs> excuse me y'all, really dangerous 
um, ballot measure that we are trying to kill um, and we are trying to get the word out in community throughout the state about how dangerous and the impacts of Prop 36. So um, that's the acknowledgement really, again, just wanted to come on here really quickly and just apologize for that. Um, and charge it to my head, not my heart. Y'all know I love this community. Um, so if you have any questions or any other concerns, or you hear any other things that are concerning, whether it be in an IJ space or otherwise, please reach out, let us know and hold us accountable. Um, Cause that's what it all, that's what we are here for in community is when we slip up, make mistakes, we hold each other accountable um, and take that accountability. So thanks y'all. I appreciate the love and the support in the chat. And with that, I will pass it over to Katrina um, to give us some quick policy updates before we hop into tonight's training. We have a few really great announcements. Um, we had seven bills on our initiate justice policy slate for this year. Um, and we had four that were signed, two that were halted in the legislature, and one that was vetoed by the governor at the last minute. So the four that were signed, um, the first one is AB 1186, um, which is mitigating youth restitution and fines. AB 1986, which addresses the CDCR banned books list. AB 2310, uh, which uh, discusses the parole language access. Um, and AB 2483, that um, discusses the resentencing procedures. So these are really, really important bills and we really wanna give uh, give a shout out to all of our IJ staff and all of our partners that worked really hard on these bills with us. Um, we also really want to uh, give space to AB 544, uh, the voting, which would have piloted uh, three voting in jails programs um, in San Benito, Santa Cruz and San Mateo counties. Uh, we know that there is a really important election coming up and we know that access to uh, to voting is important for everybody, specifically our folks that are in county jails and can vote. Um, so this bill would have been really significant, but this is not a deterrent. We're gonna still keep voting to make, keep working to make sure that uh, folks have access um, to voting. <clears throat> One second, y'all, please. All good, Katrina. We are dealing with sickies over here, but we are powering through. Um, so as Katrina mentioned, AB 544, unfortunately, was vetoed by the governor. Uh, <coughs> you can actually go onto the governor's website um, and see his veto message. I don't think we have it available right now to share, um, but what I can share is there was some concerns in his veto message around budget concerns. Um, so that was sort of the reasoning he gave. Um, and then for those of for those who may have been following us early on in the year, we did have a couple of other bills that we started out with that was AB 2065 by Ashkawa and AB 2833 um, by Assemblymember McKinner. Those were halted in the legislature uh, for strategic purposes and other reasons. And um, actually next month during our November monthly community meeting, we will actually be doing a more of a deep dive into all of these bills. Um, so talking about, you know, the challenges, the barriers, specifically um, the challenges that came up with some of the, with a couple of the bills that got halted in the legislature. So um, tonight we're going to be focusing really on Prop 36 and getting y'all all prepared and trained up and ready to have these conversations in your own communities. Um, but we wanted to bring this really brief policy update to y'all just to let you know, like, hey, this is what was signed, this is what was vetoed, and this is what we still have a lot of work to do around on. Um, so I did drop some of the bills that were passed. You can definitely also see these on our website, as well as on our, all of our social medias as well. Um, and if there's any questions about any of our policies, you can reach out to Katrina via email at Katrina at initiatejustice.org. <clears throat> and uh, we can go from there, um, but hopefully. But it is a good success that we got four of our bills signed, um, even though there were some bills that you know didn't get signed or didn't get passed or, or whatnot. Um, the four bills that did get signed are still going to impact a lot of folks um, and make things good for a lot, a lot of people, um, particularly AB 2310. 
Um, so still some some really positive, successful wins there. And we are very proud of our team here. So thank you, Katrina, everybody on staff, and then everybody in community that helped get these bills passed to the governor. So thank y'all. Anything else you want to add to that, Katrina? It's really important to remind you all that um, that we have a lot of work to do uh, against Prop 36. So just really excited that you all are here. Um, and these policies are, are a reflection of who Initiate Justice is and the kind of work that we hope to continue doing um, to, to, to really uh, affect change in the state. Awesome sauce. So now we are going to, uh, um, if there's no questions, definitely feel free to drop questions in the chat if there are questions about any of the stuff that we just mentioned. Um, but this time we are going to kick off the Prop 36 training portion of tonight's meeting. Um, so I am going to share my screen. Let me see here. Nope, I don't want to share. I don't want to share my screen. All righty. All righty. Can everybody see that? Can everybody see that? Good stuff. Awesome. Um, all righty. So this is our Prop 36 Bad California Policy Part 2 um, training. So as Brianna mentioned at the beginning, um, this training is going to specifically focus on a couple of key things. Um, and so we will be, um, we'll do a quick Prop 36 background recap. So for those that may have missed last week's training, um, we'll do a quick recap. And then um, we'll get into sort of spreading the word. And then that consists of talking more about what these actual workshops will look like, what a workshop should look like, what a community meeting should look like. Um, the different opportunities that exist with supporting communications work and um, just sharing general um, voting information in general. And then um, we'll get into some key talking points. And so we will be sharing um, some key talking points from the, Prop, the No on Prop 36 campaign. Um, and we're also going to give you some practice time um, where you will have time, real time to practice some of this, these talking points in a group setting. And then we're going to do the same thing with some tough with some tough questions. And so we have some tough questions that we're going to go over, things that we might be hearing in community or just some frequently asked questions that we know are being asked around a Prop 36, Prop 47 type of stuff. Um, and then again, have a little practice time carved out for y'all <coughs> to be able to practice responding to some of these hard questions. Um, and so hopefully you will get a kick out of this stuff. Um, we did a training a couple of weeks ago um, where we did something similar and it was really interesting, really fun, um, and it gave us really, really good practice. So looking forward to providing that space for you all this evening. Um, and then we'll close. We'll close and we'll close out with some calls to action, some announcements, some final announcements, and then that'll be it. And then of course, throughout the presentation and throughout the training, please feel free to ask questions, drop them in the chat and we'll make sure to flag them and get those answered for y'all. So without further ado, before we hop in, I am going to pass it over to Katrina to take us through a quick Prop 36 recap of the last meeting and then if you need support from us, Katrina, um, please tap myself, Efrain, or Brianna um, as you need to. <clears throat> I'm going to pass it to Efrain, who's going to uh, take us through uh, our icebreaker first. Oh, yes. I forgot about the icebreaker. Yes. <laughs> take us through the icebreaker. Let me back up. Let me back up. <laughs> Yeah, I just wanted to say thank you again for all, all for being here. But I did have this question. I'll drop it here in the chat for you all. But just really thinking about um, we have people here in this in this space right now joining us from different parts of California, different areas, uh, different communities. Right. Um, so thinking about your specific community, uh, <clears throat> what kind of community resource would you would would you create at this moment right now in your community? It could be something that 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 is not existent that is not you know whatever it is just think about your specific community right now 
and uh you know what kind of community resource do you feel your community needs um or what you would create at this moment um feel free we could take like probably a couple if you want to come off mute um and then if not uh you could just feel free to just drop it in the top of the chat Ephraim, what's up? I'm here. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, my question is, can I have access to um uh, some of the slides so I can create content out of the slides uh to give accurate uh information? Yeah, we're gonna send all of like these resources and like a bunch more in a recap email. So you'll get a copy of these and be able to to share them out. Thank you for Great. asking that too and sharing oh. it. No problem. Anytime. What resource would you create in your community? I'm sorry, say that again. What resource or community resource would you create in your community if you could? Uh, I already have a platform for that. I have a very keen delivery. Uh, I talk shit on my platform, but I mix it in with some factual information so it can be spoon fed to people in a in a very different way. Um, if you go to my platform, you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, so hopefully that answered your question. Youth services, huh? Wait. <clears throat> so the question Darla was, um, the check-in question Darla was, um, if you were able to, like, what kind of community resource would you create in your community? So it sounds like you have already taken steps to create something like a resource or like a, a platform for your community to go and find resource. So, um, right. yeah, so I think you 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 definitely answered the question there. Okay, I appreciate you. Thank you. I'm also seeing community outreach. Um, oh, Effie, your hand is raised. Go ahead and come off mute. All right, so for me, the community, I recently just moved. I moved from Imperial County, thank God, to um, <laughs> Riverside County. I currently don't know what resources they have here yet, since I've, I'm just here for, I've been here for only a couple weeks, two weeks. But the county I just left, Imperial County, they have nothing. So <laughs> when we talk about resources, as far as, um, um, system impacted folks are concerned anything and everything is what is needed there they have nothing all they have there is two state prisons and a jail so we, they need every and every everything possible that uh, that you guys have up in los angeles or in san francisco be it for information or um education or housing assistance they need everything down there if i had the ability to i would create all of those they don't have any in imperial county i like it thank you i'm also seeing folks continue to drop stuff in the chat i'm seeing shelter um, for homeless folks and folks struggling with mental health issues a community access center when city hall is not available that's a really good idea um, yeah, community outreach, youth services. I send more drop-in centers for youth, y'all. We have one drop-in center in Stockton. I think we need one. I, that's for the entire county, I believe. So um, definitely use more drop-in centers for youth and adults. And I think we could also use more um, youth shelters, especially in San Joaquin County. We don't have enough um, youth shelters. Anybody else want to share or drop anything in the chat? <clears throat> I see Rose added uh, more drug programs in her community. Definitely. Yeah. So that's amazing. Thank you all for like sharing. Uh, Sherry, I'll let you, I see you raise your hand. So I'll let you go. I just want to clarify on why I said that my city hall closes every other Friday. And so you have to kind of remember which Friday it is if you have if you need to talk to someone there. So it's, it's and shorter hours. It's been that way for quite a while. So I think they should have some kind of a, just a 
drop-in center where people can get questions and answers. It's very, it's very confusing. That would be cool. Like a, like a, um, I know out here too in my county, like we are, um, like community centers and things like that. I think it would be nice if they were like open on like a Saturday or an off day or something, so that if folks had questions about city government or whatever, they would be able to get those things asked. That's a good. That's a good resource. That'd be a good resource to have. But thank you, Sherry. Um, if nobody else, and thank you everybody for sharing and dropping stuff in the chat. It's always good to see like what folks are wanting to see more of in their specific communities. Like California is a big state, right? And even though we all have similar needs, like our communities, a lot of our communities are vastly different, right? So um, it's always nice to see like what different folks need. Literacy centers, I love it. Yes, yes to literacy centers, bring all the literacy centers. It's desperately needed. <laughs> um, with that, I will pass it oh, back over to Katrina. Um, Y'all keep adding stuff to the chat. I love to see it. So y'all keep adding stuff to the chat. But I'll pass it back over to Katrina um, to take us through the recap on Prop 36. Thank you so much, Adriana. So last week we learned that Prop 36 will increase prison spending. And the reason why we asked this um, this icebreaker question is that the California Legislative Analyst Office estimates that costs every single year for Prop 36 would be $100 million or more. Every single year, we would be paid out that amount um, in prison spending alone. And that's um, increased in court workload, that's increased in housing, that's increased in all the costs, costs associated with running prisons. Uh, Prop 36 also increases incarceration. 65,000 more black and brown people would be incarcerated every um, within 10 years. So we would, instead of decreasing, which has been the aim since the California, since the Supreme Court came in uh, and told California to start decarcerating folks, that would be against what the Supreme Court asked us to do. Uh, so we would be incarcerating folks at an alarming rate. Um, because Prop 36 uh, and folks who support it say that Prop 36 is a, um, a way to rehabilitate folks off of fentanyl, we know that this is not true. Um, it reduces rehabilitation because instead of giving money to treatment programs and, vic and, and folks who have suffered from harm, it would give more money to prisons and incarcerate folks who are suffering from addi drug addiction illness. So it would reduce rehabilitation. Forced rehabilitation never works, but that's what Prop 36 would do. Reduces money for treatment and victim services. So any money that is going into rehab facilitation um, or, or other services like that will be taken away from those programs and those services within your local communities and given to prisons across the state. It also reduces money for K through 12 programs. So California has increased its graduation rates, but Prop 36, would take away those programs that deal with truancy, that deal with the school to prison uh, nexus, and would reduce monies from at least 100 school districts across the state. So that means that graduation, excuse me, graduation rates would decrease. Programs and services that keep black and brown young people um, out of the school to prison nexus would be reduced as well. So that is what Prop 36 does. Despite um, its support, we know the truth about Prop 36. <laughs> so just really take that into account, right? Um, nonprofits who have programs that go into schools will also be impacted. It is nothing but lies and to incarcerate 
that is the bottom line, that it is increasing prison spending and harm to communities. Thank you, Katrina. Yeah, this this is one of those. I used to work for um, an organization <laughs> out here in Stockton um, called Prevail, um, and it provides uh, crisis intervention services and, and peer support services to um, crime survivors as well as um, runaway and homeless youth. Um, and so, like, it's it's very likely impossible, right, that that agency can be impacted and funding could potentially go away from that organization. Um, Cause they were, we were doing programs in schools and going into schools and meeting one-on-one -on -one with kids or, you know, whatever the case may be doing presentations and things like that, um, or just hosting groups, you know? And so those things can impact. And it's not just that it's also impacting people's livelihoods because when those, those funding sources go away for nonprofits, that means those jobs go away. And sometimes folks are able to shift things in an organization and keep folks employed. And sometimes, unfortunately, that does not happen. And so, like, we want to see these programs to we want these programs to stay funded. Um, they prevent harm, um, and they also provide that support to people who have experienced harm. And so, um, it, it keeps incarceration rates down. And that's and that's one of the things that we that we aim to do is to not increase incarceration rates, as Katrina said. So this is really important that we are speaking to the community <laughs> about Prop 36 and the dangers of Prop 36 um, and, and, how, uh, and, and how it can impact each and every one of us at the various levels, right? This can impact at least one person that everybody knows in here. So definitely casting a wide net far and wide. Um, next, I'm going to pass it over to uh, see, Brianna. Uh, Excuse see. me. Oh, do we have a? Oh, Effie, you have a question? Go ahead. I just hand up. Yes, thank you. Yeah, I was just going to ask: Is um, is ACLU one of the co-sponsors for this? If not, then it appears there is also another bill that does exactly these things that we just outlined. I I, I kind of mix up the numbers because I remember one of our our meetings, our monthly meetings for ACLU for Imperial County and San Diego County, there was one of the bills they were discussing and they wanted us, we had like a group section and we we're talking about how that bill would affect people. And it had exactly the same thing with what was just outlined. So that's bringing my question. Is ACLU one of the co-sponsors or is it just another bill that has similar impact that we're talking about here? So, one thing, this is um, it, this is a ballot measure, so it's a little bit different from a legislative bill. Like it doesn't have to go through the um, the policy process of going through committees and, and things like that, and then getting signed by the governor. So this is actually a ballot measure that is on our ballot right now. <clears throat> um, Katrina also answered that ACLU is signed on for like the no on Prop Thirty Six support, so they are part of the coalition of folks who are saying no on Prop 36. Yes, um, that's so what I meant. I didn't mean they were sponsoring. Yeah. They were saying no to it. So they were yes, against yes. the bill. OK. Yes, so they are All saying right. no, for sure. And we spoke when I said sponsor, sorry. No worries, no worries. It's it's all good. It's all good. Um, so yeah, so ACLU is one of the, the many, the various organizations who um, are saying no on Prop 36. There's um, actually a website. Um, I think it's the Stop. Stopprop36.com. I think it's a it, Katrina put in the thank you, Efrain. Um, but where you can see a list of all of the opponents um who have signed on as like no on 36. Uh, all right. If there are no more questions, I will pass it back to I will pass it over to you, Brianna. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, so really getting into like the main um, part of like the training and how we can really all get involved in this. Um, you know, we've been hearing about the impacts that Prop 36 can have on us individually, our families, our friends, our communities. Um, so it's really important that we defeat this harmful measure and really protect our wins and continue to work towards ending mass incarceration and not going back to these failed policies and 
bills and sending people to prison for years for small offenses. Um, so tonight, we really just want to give folks the tools that they need to have these conversations with their communities. And there's various ways to do this um, and just really emphasize to others the importance of no on Prop 36. Um, so the first one um, would be to host a workshop. So hosting a workshop, um, they're really meant to provide uh, the public with an overview of a subject like Prop 36 and uh, giving its potential impacts that it may pose in, well, that it poses in November. And these workshops, they can be hosted um, in person, virtually, uh, similar to how this is virtually, but it also could be um, from the comfort of your own home or wherever may be comfortable for you. Um, and workshops, usually they shouldn't exceed longer than an hour and a half. Uh, that gives you time to really like discuss the material, connect with others, but also to, to avoid like burnout and people kind of forgetting the materials. I think it's like after an hour and a half, people just tend to like be like, okay, I'm kind of over this um, and forget a lot of what's talked about. Um, and then workshops, they should also include like a time to practice and like provide facts to one another, which is what you will all see in tonight's workshop, kind of absorbing that information and then kind of going off into breakout rooms and really being able to practice the, the material that we have provided with you all today. And also workshops will always finish with a call to action. So we'll have a call to action this evening. And then also when you, or if you wish to host your own workshop, that would also end in a call to action and we can show you different ones that that would look like at the end. And then another way to mobilize your community would be by hosting a community meeting. These are kind of similar to, I like to think of just like the monthly meetings that we have, um, especially like similar to what we'll be doing next month is having our policy, having Katrina come, our policy director, and really just talking about like our bills from the year, um, IJ's policy package, and kind of what it's looked like throughout this year, and just giving updates around that. So they're pretty smaller meetings, and just like gatherings meant to like provide and discuss and learn more about things. So for this instance, you would have just like a small informal gathering with groups and really just like discussing and learning more about Prop 36. Um, and these community meetings can take place anywhere, anywhere that's comfortable, your home, coffee shops, park, et cetera. Um, they could also be virtual too, whatever really works for you and um, the folks that are attending. Yeah, that is. And then up next we have um, ComSport. So this is another way that you can really help um, the community and supporting the no on prop 36 efforts. Um, so there's ways to collaborate um, and kind of support our comms team with um, supporting with social media content. So really helping to amplify the message of no on prop 36 and utilizing your own socials, um, mobilizing your friends and families, your community to post on their socials and really amplify the no on prop 36 messaging. Um, <clears throat> also creating and sharing toolkits like the toolkits that other organizations have created, um, sharing the resources, kind of how Darla asked for the slide. So something very similar to that, just helping support our efforts and really sharing this message far and wide into the community. And we actually are going to have a call on October 8th, and it's gonna be with our comms contractor and they're gonna, um, we're really gonna just be working to have you all help us on amplifying the message on your socials, um, showing you how we amplify it on our socials. So feel free to join that. That will be on Tuesday, October 8th at 1 p.m. And we'll drop the link to RSVP for that um, in the chat. And then lastly, <clears throat> just some things to keep in mind when sharing um, no on Prop 36 messaging, especially because um, IJ is a 501c3. There are certain things that we can and can't do, especially as it relates around the election year. You want to be careful. Um, so some do's and don'ts. Um, here you'll see, do you're able to share general voter education information like ballot drop boxes, events, props, um, like information on propositions, and so on and so forth. Um, you're also able to encourage others to use their voice to vote. But the one thing you can't do is when you're encouraging people to vote, um, you're not able to really um, tell them or influence them to vote for a particular party or candidate. So um, you can't directly tell someone, oh, vote for this person because 
you know, so-and-so, but you can give them the right accurate information that will help kind of influence their mind. Um, if that makes sense, there's, there's a lot of like ways to do it, but it sounds like it's, it's hard to, to stay in line with, but it's super easy. Basically just don't emphasize a person that you want them to vote for. And other than that, just joining us in this fight and like using the resources that we provide you all, you'll, you'll do great. And then I think that's pretty much it on this end, unless anyone has any additional insight on that. But if not, I'll pass it to Adriana for the key talking points that you all can use for these types of spreading the words. Thank you, Brianna. Yeah, is there any questions on like the difference between workshop, community meeting, comms efforts? There'll be more information on the comms stuff at that Tuesday call. So if um, you're interested in supporting with communications efforts, definitely RSVP for that meeting. Um, but we will. <laughs> yeah, I, was gonna, like, I think um, I just wanted to add like and emphasize really like we're up against this uh, proposition here uh, for the November ballot and a very harmful one uh, that's gonna affect our communities that like, really just amplify anything. If you're on social media, really share out, you know, not just IJ's post, but any no on Proposition 36 post that you do see, share those out, continue to amplify that. Um, our emails that we send out uh, with the information, you know, feel free to add, share it out to listeners that you may be a part of, to your community members or, or, or whatnot, uh, things of that nature. Just continue to just like amplify, like it might not seem like a lot, but it's definitely really it's 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 so important and it's so much right. We continue to share this out and really get the word out there because I know myself like obviously I'm working on this proposition, but I know like another thing sometimes I'll forget. So it's like the more I see it, the more it's it's a reminder for me, right? And then it makes me more comfortable in speaking about it. You know, if you all are going to be hosting these community workshops or just speaking to your neighbors and things of that nature, right? Um, it, it just really helps me hone that in and really bring it so I could have that conversation. Awesome. Thanks, Efrain. Um, so next we're going to get into and focus on a few key talking points for the No on Prop 36 campaign. <laughs> <coughs> so for this section, we're going to be using three main talking points to demonstrate why Prop 36 is the wrong answer. And after going over each talking point, you all are gonna get the chance to practice in real time, making a two minute pitch using these same talking points. And so the goal of this that, that exercise is really just to get comfortable with providing a lot of information in a short amount of time. Um, now we don't expect everybody to be experts at the end of, of the breakout sessions or even at the end of this call. Um, this is just simply an opportunity for you to get used to having these conversations in community um, in a setting where you may not have a lot of time. Because sometimes we don't have a lot, of, a lot of time to quickly tell somebody the facts and the truth, right? Um, so <laughs> I want to use the right message when we are talking about why a no vote on Prop 36. Um, so always remember who you are talking to. Um, and I say that just as a general public speaking 101, like just know the room, right? Know, read the room, know who you're talking to um, so that you are able to tailor um, your words to what they might be able to receive, right? Not everybody is going to be able to receive, um, you know, uh, when we at Initiate Justice talk about abolition and ending incarceration, not everybody may not be in a place to receive that. And so being able to communicate these same points, but in a way that folks can receive them is, is key. Um, so we have three talking points, three main talking points for y'all. Um, one of the talking points for Proposition 36 is that it increases incarceration, right? So this prop would result in about 65,000 more people locked up in prisons and jails, incarcerating um, 45,000 black and brown folks, right? So this is, we know just based on history, based on data, based on statistics, right? That black and brown folks suffer the most under um, incarceration and criminal uh, penal code policies. Um, and so this is another 
way, sort of thinking of it as three strikes part two, right? So this is something that's going to increase incarceration. So when we are talking about Prop 36 in community, we want folks to know that this is not something that is going to be helpful, right? Um, mass incarceration is not helpful. We saw that with Prop, uh, not Prop, but three strikes. Um, we saw the effects of mass incarceration on our communities, on our families, and we know that it is not helpful. So we want to make sure that we are always elevating that, especially to people in our community, that this is, is not going to be a fix. This is going to be a lock them up, lock them up, lock them up proposition. Also, this is um, the other talking point is this reduces funding in program services, right? Program services across the board. Right, so 72,000 people will not be given access to effective harm prevention programs, including 100 school districts who will see cuts in their school safety programs. So Katrina mentioned that at the beginning, right? This is something that is going to cut funding. It's not going to provide any funding for supportive services or crisis intervention services. This is something that's going to take money out of that pot. Another talking point, the third talking point, and probably one that is one of the biggest, right? This this proposition is backed by corporations. This is not a proposition that is backed by community or uh, community leaders or anything like that. This is something that is backed by big corporations. So think Target, think Walmart, Home Depot. These are folks that are behind Prop 36, the folks that lock up everything in their stores and don't really have a lot of staff to cover their stores, right? So they are the ones that are behind this proposition and they are... <coughs> excuse me, putting profits over people. <clears throat> and so like, I know when I go into Walmart, um, I already see like just the corporation and how it treats its own staff and employees. So I know it's not looking out for our community, right? So that's again, one of the biggest talking points is this is supported by corporations. This is also something that is supported by prison lobbyists, right? So uh, folks that are, continuously advocating for increases in um, incarceration rates, penalties, things of that nature. Um, so these are not people looking for real solutions that are actually going to help people and keep communities safe and give people a positive shopping experience, right? This isn't going to, this isn't something that is going to do that. Um, and also just in addition to this, the CEO of Lowe's um, actually said that these things, locking up things inside cabinets and all of these other like mass incarceration type of, of policies and practices aren't the things that are, are not the things that are going to give people a positive shopping experience or to curb any of the things that we are seeing happening in community. Um, so again, corporation supported, reduces funding and program services and increases incarceration. So these are the three main talking points. So when we put you in breakout rooms, one of the things that how you are going to do this exercise, right? When we talk about making a pitch and then I'll open it up to see if there's questions. But when we talk about making a pitch using these talking points, we are talking about doing something very, very quick, right? So a pitch is usually two minutes. So anybody who's ever done like a business class or anything like that, marketing or anything, you know that a pitch is two minutes or less, right? You gotta, you gotta hook them in two minutes or less. Um, and so the three, th the three things to remember about making a pitch is to keep it short, right? Because again, sometimes you only, all you have is two minutes. Sometimes all you have is less, right? So you need to work with what you've got. Also, you wanna focus on those three, those three talking points, those key talking points. You don't want to fill your pitch with unnecessary jargon, right? You want to stick to your point, right? Point A, point B, point C. And then <clears throat> your call to action, you always wanna end with a call to action, which is simply just encouraging a no vote on Prop 36 and encouraging um, them, whoever you're speaking to, to share that information with other folks, right? Um, very, very quick, very, very quick. And so looking at, we have some instructions to help y'all out because we're gonna give y'all some time to practice. Um, but the instructions, you are going to briefly introduce yourself, right? Hi, my name is Adriana. Um, I am formerly incarcerated. You're going to deliver the three key messages, right? Let me tell you a little bit of the truth about Prop 36. Prop 36 actually is going to increase incarceration by X, Y, and Z, 
Um, it's corporately sponsored by Target, Walmart, and Home Depot, who continue to put uh, profits over people. And this is something that is going to cut funding from a lot of great services and community like housing, um, victim services, um, and school safety programs as well. So if you are in agreement that those things, that you do not want to see those things happen in your community, then you definitely need to be voting no on Prop 36. And please tell your friends and family to vote no on Prop 36. That's it. That's what a quick pitch looks like. It doesn't have to be super polished and perfect. Again, this is just practice, but we wanna get y'all used to having these conversations. You might be at a grocery store and you might hear somebody talking about it and you might wanna chime in really quickly and say, hey, let me tell you a little bit about what I know about the facts. Um, so that is the exercise that we are going to do. We're going to put folks in breakout rooms but before we do that, just want to open up to see if there's any questions about making a pitch or um, like what the three talking points are. I'll put those back on the screen for y'all so you can see them. There we go. Um, but yeah, are there any questions on making a pitch? Wonderful, wonderful, perfect. Um, so we are gonna give y'all about 15 minutes um, in the breakout room, about 10, 15 minutes, and then we're gonna bring you back and then we're gonna move forward with talking about how to respond to hard questions. Um, so Brianna, do you have breakout rooms ready to go? Awesome. Um, so we're gonna open up breakout rooms in like 10 seconds. Um, you should see something pop out on your screen that says join breakout room, um, and then you'll join, and then we'll bring you back in about 15 minutes. Adriana, are you going to still see the slides in the breakout rooms? Um, I don't think so. Once you're in the breakout room, you're you you can't see the screen anymore because it's a separate it's a separate room but we can broadcast the uh talking points so all the breakout rooms let's see does everybody see their join breakout room button so if you push the three little dots on your picture or also at the bottom of the screen where it says more and you click on that and it should say join breakout room. Your name, Gerona. Hi, Theo. Hi, I pressed the uh, join, but I'm still here. Mm, try again, because I see you're still assigned to, to the room that you're in. I don't see any three dots anymore. You don't see the more um, at the bottom of your screen? Are you on a computer or are you on your phone? There you go. All right, I'm going to stop share. For a I second. don't know why, but when I like try to click the like, let them know that a a timer is like coming. And then how was uh, your breakout room, Rose? How was that exercise for you? Um, it was good, um, but I can't really talk right now because I'm in class. <laughs> gotcha. Thank you for being here, though. Yeah, of course. Let me see. Welcome back in. We're still waiting on a couple more more rooms to finish up the last seven seconds of their conversation. Um, so me, here comes everybody back, and I'll pass that over to you, Efrain. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, welcome everybody. How'd that feel? Uh, drop in the chat how that felt. Nerve wracking. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Trust me, I, 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 I know the feeling, so <laughs> I'm with you on that. It sometimes can be that, and I think uh, the importance that's why I want to put you guys in a smaller group, try to give you guys a little, make you all a little bit more comfortable. Um, but definitely informative. I see informative. Nice to meet new folks. Yes, always great to meet new folks and be in community uh, with new people. Yeah, and I'm very concerned for you. Learn from each other, correct? Thanks. Just a reminder, if you can please put yourselves on mute, uh, that would be great. All right, awesome. Now, now you had some experience with some of those talking points. We're going to really get into like some of the tough questions, right? I know they're going to come. We know they're going to come. There's going to be opposition to what we're trying to do, right? Um, and how do we answer those tough questions? And I'm laughing at the the gif that was used there. <laughs> I always love it. Um, so here are some of the tough questions. And Adriana, if you don't mind, I'm gonna probably do this and then we'll hop into like the framework kind of, and then I wanna come back and answer like real quick. Um, but here are some of, some of the tough questions that we've been seeing that we've been hearing about, you know, that are going to arise uh, when we begin to talk about Prop 36, right? So one is, what if I don't want people getting away with that in my community, right? We all understand accountability is always important, you know, but again, prison is not a solution uh, to everything, right? To anything, I should say, right? We need to get away from this punitive uh, approach that that uh, society has try to get me to believe that was the right way or the or the right, right way of handling things right there. There's so much other ways. So we think about that. Um, number two, what about fentanyl? Something has to be done about rampant substance abuse, right? And then number three, why should I oppose something that will help people get off the streets, right? Um, so if we could jump to the next section. I wanted to dive into like how do we respond to these right so some of these hard like i said these hard questions will come um you know might not be in every space that you're in or every person that you spoke speak with but you know i'm sure they'll pop up and they have popped up in my in my experience already so responding to these hard, hard questions um the most effective way to persuade these voters is to begin with empathy meeting them where they are right acknowledging their concerns right that's not uh that's right. What someone is feeling is is what they're feeling. Uh, what they believe is what they believe, and all that. But it, so understanding that really, um, and taking that taking heed to that, right? Um, I always say listen with intent, right? Um, I know from my experience in the past, I've always listened, ready to respond back, and ready to fight back, and and you know I've tried to learn to stay, take a step back, and I don't always do it, but I've tried. So uh, we have this uh this approach that y'all can use, this framework, so to speak, um, and think about the values, villain, and the vision, right? The values, right? Understanding we all want to live in a safe and, and stable community, right? This is something that we all desire, that we all look for, strive for, um, and that we all envision, right? Um, then the villain, right? Thinking about Instead of fixing the issue, these issues, let's talk about how Prop 36 would actually only worsen the issues, right? Eliminating these pro programs that are in our communities, that are being effective in our communities. So thinking about that, um, our vision, you know, um, coming up, ensuring that, the, that, that we continue to invest in these real solutions, right? Uh, affordable housing, access to treatment, you know, these things that have proven track record um, that have worked already in our, our communities. So just really wanted to highlight those things, right? Um, so we can go back to a question. I wanted to like dive into a little bit or just kind of like answer these, like some kind of sample for you, I guess, so to speak, how I would answer it. And for me, it's always using like my personal experience really. And again, it's as Adriana mentioned earlier, really thinking about who we're speaking to um, and 
my approach, honestly, in whatever space I've been in or whoever I'm talking to, I've always shared, like, I have no shame or nothing of being formerly incarcerated. Of uh, My experiences, they have brought me to where I've been, where I am now. Um, and they're mine, right? <clears throat> so, like, when we think about what if I don't want people getting away with theft in my community, right? Think about that. Um, we can't ar arrest our way out of this problem, right? Uh, accountability, as I mentioned, is 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 so important, right? Accountability for whether it's physical damage, emotional damage, monetary damage, whatever it might be that we're causing to our communities, right? There has to be accountability. We all agree on that, right? But I think uh, imprisoning somebody, putting someone in prison, especially for these crimes like petty theft, right, is not a, the solution. Prop thirty six. Uh, is not the solution for these problems. We, as Californians, already California already has some of the top, the toughest shop shoplifting uh, laws already in place, right? There's already things in place that can battle this. They just want to go tougher on crime, make more of these smaller, smaller crimes, or like such as petty theft, um, drug, uh, substance abuse. Um, they want to go back to the harsher punishments, right? And we know that. And I just wanted to add, like, there's a fact, like there's 42% of people who live in prison, who leave prison, return with a different conviction, right? 10% um, in Los Angeles County uh, for those people who have gone in services, right? Let's think about that. These are the people that have gone to and gotten received services is that this proposition is looking to take away from, right? They're trying to take away $100 million in funding for some of these programs that have helped. So it's like, why are we going to go go for something so small, uh, go away in prison, and then come back out and with no solution? There's no resolve, right? More than likely, uh, I know from my personal experience, I have gone on and done like more worse crimes or whatever it is, right? If there's no support there, we're not tackling the underlying issue um, some, that some of these programs do. They help, right? In regards to the fentanyl, we talk about, uh, you know, something has to be done with this ramp, rapid uh, uh, substance abuse, right? And for myself, as a former addict myself, I know for a fact that prison didn't help me get sober, right? Um, I know it was a program that I took, you know, uh, that was a treatment program that I took that helped me realize those underlying issues, why I felt the need to do use drugs or escape in my my experience um, and, and really use that, right? Um, surrounding myself with community, like-minded members, community members, right? Th thinking about that. So I think it's important for us to remember that we need to continue to invest in these programs that are helping our communities break that cycle, get out of the substance abuse, you know, things of that nature. And then the last question, why should I oppose something that's been helping me get off the streets? Honestly, it's not really helping people get off the streets. Let's talk about affordable housing. Let's talk about investing in things of that nature, substance use programs, you know, that are really going to get people out of our community and into a stable environment, into a stable place, you know, so just really wanted to highlight that. So definitely wanted to give you all a chance to go into some breakout rooms. So here, uh, uh, we'll do that again. I don't know, Brianna, if you're ready, I'll definitely uh, broadcast the questions and ha let y'all have some of those conversations in a smaller breakout room. Does everybody know what they're doing in their breakout rooms? You're gonna, re you're gonna practice responding to these hard questions. So like if Rain said, he's going to broadcast them into the chat and then you're just going to practice giving your response to these hard questions. Let me draw Breakout that. rooms are open. Thank you, Brianna. <coughs> Let me broadcast. This is great. Awesome. Welcome, Welcome back, back everybody. Everyone. Oh, go ahead, Brianna. I'm just stepping oh, all good. in here. 
in your Welcome kitchen. Back. Why was, was this uh, one shorter than the first one? The breakout session. We didn't have. They were both time. ten minutes. They were both ten minutes. The time flies oh, when, really? you go, when you're having fun. Time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> right. It did seem like everyone was having fun because they didn't come back until like the last, the very last second. So. With that, I want to ask if anyone feels comfortable enough to share or let us know how their breakout rooms went or if they want to share any reflections or maybe practice something, maybe for a few minutes that we have left. I'd like to share for one minute or two. Yeah. Oh, everybody. I might look like I might be 88. I'm a damn good organizer and I want to make money and we're going to connect out of tonight, I should have been at United Way. I'm Richard, I'm not rich, but I have a domain name of Homies Union, and this is the one, and Crying Inc. How about getting some money so you can expand, and particularly interested in LA, San Diego, and I'm up uh, near Silicon Valley. So I'll try to connect more than tonight, how do I do? One minute. That's my pitch. That Who was awesome. I don't have the board or the staff. And that action. was awesome. You're getting claps all around, too. And we also need that energy in the, the Silicon Valley. I feel like we don't have much over there. And we got someone going into the jails. And if you never heard of Victory Outreach, they can take people out of the prison and bring them to Jesus. Just know what not me, but what we can do together. And I will be making our, my community aware of the no on 36. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you for sharing with us and sharing with the community. We're happy to have you here. And excited to get you out into your community to tell everyone no on Prop 36. Um, and that's a good segue, too, into just kind of closing for tonight. Um, I first want to thank you all for joining us tonight and really engaging with one another in these workshops and the breakout rooms, especially, and just really like getting that practice for how you can <clears throat> mobilize your community and really help us in defeating Prop 36. Um, so while we close out tonight, we really want to share some resources that we have for you all. And no worries if you're not able to like grab them all from the chat tonight. We're also going to be sharing them in a recap email that you all will get um, sent to your emails. So they'll be dropped in the chat, um, but just a few of them are a sign up form on you indicating interest if you're interested in hosting a workshop or a small community meeting and just supporting our efforts. Um, also, you can register to attend our special com um, comms call, which is with our comms team and kind of helping us support spreading the message on social media and spreading messages on your own social media. Um, resources to how you can share information with your friends and family and encourage local electeds to vote no on Prop 36. Um, and then um, there's also some upcoming no on Prop 36 opportunities with um, our partners and allies that we're putting in the chat, um, just some dates and locations where you can go and just be a part of this movement and be in community and in solidarity. And I'm trying to see the other ones that are and then also just some voting information as well. So um, when your ballots are able to be dropped off on October 7th, the last day to register and just links to register if you all need that. And then last but not least, um, we would love to see you all again next month at our November meeting to hear um, really more in depth updates around IJ's policies and just hear directly from our policy director, Director Katrina, who was so great to be here tonight with us. Um, and I think that's about it. Adriana, um, Katrina, Efrain, let me know if I missed anything too. Um, but don't forget, we'll be sharing these also in a recap email. So don't feel rushed to get tell them, them about the save the day. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. So definitely, uh, one final thing and we saved it for the end. Uh, not sure if anybody here is from the Fresno area or the central valley uh next month we will be having uh we will we'll be partnering with drop LWAP coalition uh for a community event in fresno california um uh we're gonna do it's a voting rights homecoming 
really it's going to be uh we're going to be able to have resources for folks who have returned home uh for families also with loved ones planning to return home things of that nature so if you're in the fresno area central valley area definitely uh stay tuned um so just save that date saturday november 2nd um connect with us on social media uh we'll have some more information and then y'all sh y'all should be receiving more information also from our emails so keep a lookout and if you're not from that area but you know somebody in the area share it with them again we are a community we are stronger together um definitely share those resources out um the prop 36 stuff as i mentioned anything you see that says no on prop 36 share it out on social medias whatever you receive an email share it out it's so important um you know i know there's like even this event if you cannot be there um but you know somebody in that area definitely that invite them we want everyone there uh to be in community with us and i don't have anything else i just really wanted to like really if we could do like the emojis the reactions clap you know, applaud yourselves definitely for having. I jumped into some of the breakout rooms, heard some uh, amazing conversations happening. Really, shout out to you all just for taking that step to have these conversations for us to get more comfortable. Because I know I wasn't comfortable when I first started, when we started on this ballot initiative. You know, I'm getting more and more comfortable. But yeah, shout out to you all for this, uh, for being here with us. And as Katrina said, how will y'all vote on Prop 36? Oh, no. <laughs> Everybody. Everybody no. come on. How will we be voting on Prop 36? No. No, no on Prop no 36. Way. No, no way. No, no on 36. No. No. Make sure you all sign Everybody. up. Make Everybody, sure please sign up for our email list so that you do not miss out on the recap emails that we send out. So again, you can go to tinyurl.com slash join IJ. I dropped the link in the get a link again in the chat um, so that you don't miss out on any of these resources. So make sure that you are signed up for that email list. Um, and we'll make sure to get these resources out to y'all for sure. Thank you. All right. Thank you guys send us a link too for the next meeting. Yeah, it's on the, mm -hmm. we'll send it also in the recap email. Yeah, so we'll send the recap. Yeah. 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 I have all and the then we'll also that. share it on our socials and everything like that, too. I'll be there. I'll be there. So I'm over here in the Los Angeles area, and I'm going to get the, word, the message out. We're canvassing and doing everything we can over here for no on property six, though. So believe me. Thank you all again. Have a great yeah, rest. Yeah, for sure. All right. all right, you guys, too. Thank you, you. Thanks, Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone.